record. Welcome, everybody. My name is Patri Derek Pan. I'm the CEO and president of Kmarkin, the leading, uh, the world's leading news hub on the Cambodian diaspora. This afternoon, we have Chrysanthi Tan live from Los Angeles. Welcome, Chrysanthi. Hello. How are you this very afternoon? Um, I am <laughs> very doing very well because the sun is still up. Oh yeah, Are, and you're based right now in San, uh, Los Angeles. Is that yes. correct? Cool, yes, cool. I'm home, and I will be for quite some time. Awesome. For those watching us right now, we have seven live guests watching us. Do us a quick favor: hit the share button uh, on the top left on Facebook or Twitter. We want as we want as maximum attention and uh, as possible. So share that link uh, as much as you can. And some quick house rules uh, for those who want to participate. Uh, it's up to you. Uh, you can leave questions for Chrysanthi uh, by typing forward slash the letter Q and then the and space with the question. We can queue it as one of the four boxes that will be visible for, for everyone to see. Or you can just type it on the live chat on the bottom right side. Uh, also, if you like anything that we're saying or we're doing, um, there is this uh, hand button. Did you see it, Chrysanthi, on the, on the bottom right? Yeah. Like, see, if we like what you're saying, or what are you doing, we can give you props for it. See it? So, oh, uh, cool. another way for those to engage with us. It's one of my favorite emoji. emoji. You like that? <laughs> How do you, what do you even call that emoji? Um, you know, if you, if, you, if you type it into your computer, it, you can see the names of them. And I can't remember, it's probably something like raising two hands. Some of them are very surprising. Yeah, I, I never knew that. Well, without further ado, Chrysanthi, tell us who, what are you about? Oh no. Um, well, I'm a composer and a violinist. And the things that I um, write are mainly chamber music for like piano and strings. Um, I recently released an album over the summer called Stories. Uh, yes. It's available on iTunes and Spotify if you want to stream it or my store, but whatever. Um, yes, yeah, so that had chamber music for piano, violin, um, viola, cello, and some light electronics. Uh, mm -hmm. maybe, I, I guess maybe that's we'll how. Play a clip of that later, maybe. Definitely, that's something that we're going to explore in this broadcast. Uh, yeah. For those who stay with us um, for this uh, this interview, I think we have a special treat for you—a live performance. But no promises. It's all dependent on Chrysanthi. Um, we we at Kamarikan first heard about you about three years ago. And mm -hmm. I think it was um, at random. Mm -hmm. And it was through um, it was through one of your earlier projects that, uh, uh, that we stumbled upon your work. And through your mom, who's been a great advocate of your work, in our opinion. Uh, share us a little bit about your evolution. As, an, as a musical artist, like how did you, where did it all start? And how did it all start? Well, I started playing piano first. I started playing piano and violin when I was pretty young, um, like second or second, second grade for, uh, for piano, third grade for violin. Um, I'm gonna skip all this backstory because it's boring, but um, mm -hmm. when you met me, what was I doing? You were, there was pre-glee, it was. Uh, I was about to to start. I was about to go on Glee, but exactly. like it was, but it was, but it was before that. I think people were tagging us some of the the work that you were doing. I yeah. don't know the, the exact details what you were doing. It was um, my SoundCloud. You found my SoundCloud. SoundCloud, and I had some like demos up, and a lot of those ended up on my Stories album. Yes, fictions. You had a you had a different alias back then, right? I it did. I did. Fictions. And I. Oh my I god! I remember that. <laughs> I still have it saved just in case I want to. I really, I still really like it, but it'll be like a side project, maybe. Um, mm. oh, I'm getting some questions already. Go, uh, go for it at any time. The, these questions you can answer at any time. Um, uh, but you want to tackle let's, them? Let's keep yeah. let's keep some continuity for just one second. Um, then I started playing with more um like pop artists and tv shows and um i did glee season four which some people will randomly tag me in photos <laughs> like <laughs> is this you and i'm like yeah um good eye because you know how it is like 
one episode can be like just one second. Right. I'm just for those who haven't seen Glee, I like I played violin and viola on the show. So, you know, they always have like a band <clears throat> to accompany the singers when they're singing. Like I would just be in that band playing violin. So sometimes they'd like pan to us, but like sometimes you'd have to really have a good eye. Um, it was fun though. <laughs> and how many episodes were you on there at that time? Mm, you have a, an like idea? at least a dozen. We go back to at season least, four. At, at least, least a dozen. A dozen wow. But it's like all through season four. So if you watch season four and like have a have a good eye. What season? What season are we on now? I don't know. I don't, you don't know? To be honest, I I think it's like wrapping up now. I see. Oh, it, it, the new the new season hasn't started. See, I don't watch TV. I don't. Know. I don't know. I'm I've been so out of touch. I didn't even. Yeah. I haven't seen any movies that were nominated at the Oscars even. Mm. Yeah. I see. Yeah, but uh, but uh, yeah, I guess that's how we first like stumble upon your work, the 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 SoundCloud, and then you were getting in transition into your time with Glee. And we've been we featured you as one of uh, uh, my America's uh, you know must watch people, and I think I'm I feel strong in that statement that you know you, since since that was announced what it was 2012 13 it was 2014. 14. 13 or 14, yeah, and we've seen you, you've seen you progress quite quite immensely. Yeah, awesome. since then I've, I've done, yeah, I think it's been like more exponential growth, thank goodness. Because you don't, it, it seems kind of thankless growing up and like starting out as an artist. You're like, where is this going? Like, am I going, am I even going to, to make it? Like, what's going to happen to me? And you've been full time as an artist for the last for, few for years. Yeah. Two years. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, can you share some of the collaboration and projects you've done uh, yeah, leading just, up to now? So after that, after you put me on the watch list, um, I mean, I've I've played with a ton of artists, but that's not like you can just read about that on my website if you really if you really care. Um, the biggest things I. All of last year, um, I was on tour with Ariana Grande. And that was really a cool experience. Um, so I was her violinist, and it was a beautiful world tour. Um, and she's so talented. It was an honor to work with her, really. Um, yeah. I just, How long was that tour? I, I remember seeing bits and pieces of your travels. How long was that? Just give our viewers a scope well, of I, an idea. How, well, pre pre preparation started, like, my well, I was brought on like late December, late December to start okay. of last year, two years ago to start preparing for it. Rehearsal started in January, and then the tour started in February, and then I was back here um, like a little before November. So it was like almost a full year thing. Yeah, um, we went to we did a couple different tours of North America, like Canada and. North um, and I went to Asia and, and Europe. Um, got to wow. see a lot of new places. And the year before that, that summer, I had been on tour with Paul Enka, totally different artist. Um, and that was just some U.S. stuff in Europe. I see. Yeah, we definitely noticed you racked up those flyer mileage in the last 24 <laughs> months. And hotel. <laughs> and hotel, yeah. Yeah. We saw those photos. Um, of your time with with various artists, and it's been amazing to to follow you at that stage when we first discovered you, circa 2012, 13 to now at the present. So it's it's been it's been awesome. Um, can you share us? I still want people to understand a little bit about your background, like leading up to you becoming a full time artist. So share us a little bit more of like you you said you started with the piano, but can you share us a little bit of like your childhood, teen years of of yeah. with music? I started, um, I was classically trained on piano and violin. Uh, actually, that's partially a lie. Um, mm -hmm. I was classically trained, but with violin, I started out uh, with a bluegrass teacher, sort of. Bluegrass. So I didn't start formal, like, hardcore classical training until middle school, which is a little bit un unusual for, um, for violinists. Whoa, that was... Hey, new what? people. It says, sorry, this pop-up just came up. It says, it's their first day on Blab. Welcome them. Yeah, And yeah. I know who this did. person is because she is a patron of mine on Patreon. So shout out. Nice, nice. Later. That's a place where I like really connect with my 
most supportive fans and it's like kind of a yeah i'll talk more about that later That's but fine. anyway okay so i so i played violin and piano really hardcore growing up um and then also like danced and did gymnastics and you know went to school because you gotta do that too um and i actually studied english and uh, see okay here's the thing how do i say What's this that? It's hard. I didn't realize that I that being a musician would be actually a viable career. That wasn't mm. something I grew up with. Uh, that mentality, sort of. Um, I saw people on TV. They, I, they didn't. I don't know. I didn't see myself fitting into that. You know, that you see like everyone talks about media representation and like diversity and this and that, but like I just straight up didn't didn't think that like, oh yeah, entertainment and music industry isn't something for like people like me. So I guess. This I'm was during your, your, your high school years, correct? As as your school, high school years? But I, so I just wasn't bred to believe that like mm. I could do that. You know, it was kind of like, I'm going to study hard. And I did really well in school. Like I was very studious and stuff. Um, and then if you're successful, you're, you're a doctor or a lawyer or or, you know, something where you have like a title, like teacher, or like where you get a salary and you know, <laughs> it's easy to explain to people what you do. Saying like, I'm an independent artist and I do studio work and I do like tours and I compose, like that was completely out of the question. I had no, I, I didn't even know what, no, not at all. <laughs> not at all. all right. Um. Yeah, so I can't really, sometimes I can't really, really believe that I'm, <laughs> that I somehow am here because I, I didn't really know what to look up to. Um, so sometimes oh, high school or, or younger people will ask me a lot of questions and I'm just like, oh my gosh, I, I yes, like you can do it. <laughs> and I, I don't know. Well, you definitely are doing it. Um, yeah. If people go to that website, chrysanthetan.com, they can see your portfolio in the last 36 months. It's been, it's been stacking up. Yes. Uh, I want to answer these questions before they disappear yes. in the chat because it go will really it. stress me out. Um, <laughs> go for it, Chrysanthi. Sorry. Okay. I do not know. Um, I don't know that uh, violinist, but the name sounds familiar, but maybe it's just because of Geronimo. I'm not sure. But um, now I... Chances are I'll meet them tomorrow. Um, okay. Do I own Why tomorrow? Mice? What's, what's, what's tomorrow? No, no, not tomorrow. But, you know, oh. when you get a name in your head and you're like, no, I don't know that. And then you see it everywhere. It happens to me all the time. Um, do I own any mics for my violin? Yes, I have a few different mics. One of them is right here. I believe they're AKGs. Um, but when I travel, and this is a good question, because when I travel, I also still do studio work and composition work. Um, so like when I was on tour, some uh, some artists wanted me to add string arrangements to their tracks, which is something that I something I do from home. I do uh, remote sessions, and I had my mobile setup, so I do have an Apogee um, that I travel with on the road, mm -hmm. and I can just set it up in my hotel room and fold it down and travel with it, and it goes into a nice little pouch. So, yeah. Is that other questions that? People have asked so far as before we transition. I grew up on rice and broccoli, believe it or not. I know it's not like very fancy. I like, I know, but, <laughs> but that is what my dad, it, it is, it is good. It's a staple. You can't go wrong, you can't go wrong with it. Like honestly, just lunch rice, like in my lunch box in kindergarten with chopsticks, rice and broccoli. And then back before I was vegan, like with chicken, um, rice with exactly and then i was gonna say dinner more rice just the steamer was always on the right the, the rice steamer um rice cooker and when sick water rice water rice oh you can do that that's something that i see my dad do every now and then in the morning i can't i can't do that water soaked yeah water and rice for those probably not that aren't familiar that's just <laughs> really that's very common during the khmer rouge time and it's common like out in the countryside with with farmers they it's the cheapest and it's exactly it's very accessible so that's that's what my dad knew growing up so that's yeah. what he gave me i 
water ice yeah and i would add a lot of, i would add a lot of soy sauce to it <laughs> that was our, our good friend panin who left a message a question we'll do we'll have a few more questions uh related to your your biracial background and um you know uh, but i'm glad i'm glad some of our friends are dropping in questions and at any time uh the public can leave questions for chrysanthi and we'll we'll uh, try to do our best to uh to answer every one of them um chrysanthi can you share us um we talk a little bit about your um your acting can you share us any other stuff you've done um actually i used to do uh like musical theater and 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 drama and like short films and stuff Ooh. i used to do more acting but then but i i don't really anymore and I've been on a few TV shows, but it's mostly as a violinist nowadays. And I, I used to have a commercial agent and like go out for commercials too, but I don't honestly have time uh, for that right now. When you when you have an agent um, and you're kind of in that circuit, you have to be like on call to like get a notification in the morning, like there's an audition today, and you have and you just have to go and. When so it sounds so it sounds like your acting stuff has been put on the side because I know that's also something that uh, when we were digging our, and doing our research about you you were you were exploring that in the earlier years yeah no I I it's something I loved and I took a lot of classes and did did drama stuff and but um, no I don't really have time for and I did like activist theater too activist well. theater what's yeah. that elaborate that um, sort of theater that uh, for the purpose of highlighting social issues and like engaging mm -hmm. social awareness. That was, that was really a rewarding thing that I did in college. I was part, I was part of a group called Stamp, Stanford Theater Activist Mobilization Project. And the person, like one of the, the people who founded it were, were really amazing, inspiring activists that I still look up to to this day. Um, yeah. I see. Cool. Cool, and I, I'm also guessing then your modeling uh, ambitions have been sort of uh, backseat as well. To well, that I just of... that I just do like when it comes when it comes up. I never I don't seek it. I, oh, I, I just if, if I'm if I'm called and it and it works, then then there you go. I, I hope I hope some people are watching us now and say, hey, she's uh, <laughs> she's perfect for our the uh, these campaigns that we have in the future. <laughs> Who knows? You're not sticking for it, but people will find you. <laughs> yeah. But what kind of stuff have you done so far in modeling? I, I want people to know that you're you're like you're you're like multi talented. You've been. I just and, don't know what's interesting to people because I'm just me. Um, I mostly do uh, hair modeling. Hair modeling. Okay. Yes. Um, but you just chopped it recently again, right? I'm chopping it like every month because wow. I chop it all the time um, because I love the Sassoon Academy. I, they're my people. Um, if, if if anyone doesn't like if if you've heard of Vidal Sassoon, I don't know how to write in this thing. I'll write here. He was like <laughs> a pioneering hairdresser. And I don't think anyone on this chat knew me um, like several years ago when my hair was down to here. I had super long hair. It two came, years ago, was that, was that no, long? No, no, not two years ago. I said like several years ago. Oh, several years ago, okay, gotcha. Like a while. Um, so I, I had really, really long hair and then I chopped it off. Yes, exactly. If you go on my Instagram, <laughs> as someone pointed out, you can see some, some throwback long haired pictures. I look quite different, am amazingly different. Can hardly recognize me um and ever since i've had short hair um i don't know i just that's when like more modeling stuff i guess mm. came up all mostly in the la area i would i would imagine correct and there's a photographer that a friend a friend slash photographer that i that i that i really like that um has flown me to San Francisco once for a shoot and hopefully we'll do it again sometime because he's a great photographer, but yeah, short hair is the, the best. I'm trailing off because I got distracted, but um, yeah, short hair, uh, 
Sassoon keeps it how I like it. And they're, I consider them to be artists, like not just like a hairdresser who's just gonna do the job. I think people who do hair are artists like I am and they have their craft and I see how precise they can be. And it's inspiring for me to sit in a hairdresser's chair and see how much detail they put into like a scissor over comb right. and how much they'll like feel my head to see the shape and like they can point out where the bones are and like what they're doing. Like, I just love oh. that. Like any sort of, any sort of um, kind of artist is inspiring to me. And I think hair is an art. Uh, isn't it true that like last week uh, as a pre birthday gift, uh, um, a barber gave you a four hour or five hour haircut. Is that true? Yeah, that's, uh, my, I... that's my style. That's yeah. That's my main stylist at the Sesame yes. Academy. Um, but she, what can you do in four or five hours? I'm just curious. You don't have to break down all know, four hours. With I, us, don't, but... I don't know if the whole, did I say it was four? It was like a few I'm hours. probably just blabbing. I'm probably Sometimes, exaggerating. So when I'm getting prepped for like a, for a show or, or something, it, yeah. it can take much longer, especially if there's wow. color involved too, because then they'll put you through color. And then I've had her, she's worked on my fringe alone for like over an hour. It, it's amazing how long it can take when you go really deep into it. If That's amazing. Started, I, I, I would think you. if you had longer hair, I'm just see this is my ignorance of the profession. I would think if, if you had long hair, then you, there's probably more maintenance and work that could be done to sort of, you know, whatever the, the final product is. But I would think short hair. Short hair takes, Bar like short hair takes longer to cut than long hair. Wow. Overall, for sure. Barbering and barbering is really, is really special. <laughs> oh, I'm just I starting out. I think hair is so cool. I see. Well, that's a call. That's a, that's something that you, uh, I hope you get some more inquiries after this interview. <laughs> I mean. Because it's, it's on replay. You, you know the. And you have that. You have the top stylist there now at, at Vidal Sassoon. I'm from. I've seen some of the Vidal Sassoon stuff that you did a while yeah. back. Yeah, she's definitely. An, she's an amazing. Yeah, she's an amazing. It's Tracy Sakasitz as an incredible educa hair educator that tours the world just like I tour for violin. Like she does that to teach hair to people. I see. Yeah. Anyway. That's cool. We're gonna transition a little bit uh, into. Uh, just the cultural background, uh, growing up biracial, and a little bit about your Cambodian identity. Uh, I'm not sure not everyone, I remember when we first shared you on Comerican, like, you know, every time we share like a biracial uh, 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 individual on Comerican at, at our news hub, uh, we always get people doubting and like questioning and, and always really getting critical about what is Cambodian. Um, and I wanted people to understand a little bit about, uh, you can share with us uh, how you, how, how was I growing up biracial uh, uh, in, in Long Beach, right? You went yeah. to school in Long Beach. Uh, can yeah. you just share with us some, some bits and stories, some challenges that you, you've had uh, growing up, if you call it even challenges? Yeah, there are a lot. I'll, I'll share some of them. Some of, uh, a lot of them I un un prob unfortunately probably shouldn't say here, but um Growing up in Long Beach is a very welcome place, I will have to say. Like, I got lucky with, or, you know, for those of you who don't know, like, Long Beach is, one, very multicultural, cultural, and I went to Long Beach Poly High School, which is, like, you know, it's very multicultural as well. And Long Beach also has the largest Cambodian population outside of Cambodia or outside of Phnom Penh. Right? Correct. Outside of Cambodia. Right. So there's... You know, there's there's a lot of people there, and there weren't a lot of mixed people though that mm. were, and and I had never met someone who was Cambodian and Greek. Um, yes. But I grew up with a really strong cultural heritage on both sides. Um, because so okay, yeah. So I'm half I'm Hapa, which means half like I'm half half I'm half. Uh, half Asian and half white, of course, but um, my mom is an immigrant as well from Greece. Um, so, okay. 
So it's not like um, some people, like when some white people are like, I'm not, oh yeah, I think I'm like English and Scottish and kind of mixed in with stuff because they've been here for a long time. Like with my mom, it's, it's the opposite. She's like, no, I'm, I'm Greek. Like it was always very clear that she was Greek. So I grew up with like knowing Greek mythology and like kind of doing Greek dance and doing lots of Greek things. And then of course, like my dad, my dad's side. So I used to do Cambodian dancing. Yes. Really? Let's see your hand. I'm, we not, did, we did. I'm not that great anymore. That's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's bad. It's bad. It's bad. It's bad to people who know what it should be. But True. I used to, I, but I used to stretch every day, like with the pinky, like, our teacher, Sophie Lynn, was my teacher. Oh, I just saw that. Ouch. Yeah. So, every like, I still remember, like, you know, we had to start, like, our day. Yeah. Hey, I can still get it, kind of. Yeah, that's way but, better like, than nothing. Eight finger and then, like, the whole thing. And it was, it's so interesting because Cambodian dance is, like, so into specific movements. It's very beautiful. And it's lots with the hands. Like, your hands have to be flexible. And I ended up transitioning into, like, other kinds of dance growing up, like jazz mm. and and I still kept up with Greek dance um, and other things. And those are also engage lots of your body, but not specifically with the hands. Like that's more legs and, and you know, torso and, and maybe arms, but <laughs> only Cambodian dance has been like violin and that it's very like hand oriented. Anyway, mm. I got very sidetracked there. No, you didn't. I don't even know I think what the main question was. Oh, just challenges challenges growing up by uh right. you know bicultural with your greek and cambodian roots okay. i i okay. know you recently tried to pick up a cambodian instrument right you don't mind me asking oh oh you mean that ronet right there oh that yeah, ronet and a troll yes I've... um but i forgot to answer the challenges question and that okay. is one when you're when you're mixed first i have to put out there as a mixed person before I say anything else, I have white privilege. Just putting that out there. Like there, it's true. Like there are, it's just, you know, okay. Second of all, it's when you're mixed, you have a harder time finding your community and being mm. accepted by either community, if that makes sense. So when I would be at like Cambodian or Chinese relatives, it would kind of be like, Oh, that like, oh yeah, that yeah. Nick, that, that's my brother, Nick and Chrysanthi either. Yeah, they're the mixed one. Like we'd be on the outskirts a little bit sort of, and the kids my age would kind of like make fun of us and, and, and everything. And then the same thing with the Greek side would be like, Chrysanthi, she's Asian, like, and people would be playing with my hair all the time. And, and I kind of felt uh, like an outsider on both ends a little bit. And also with language, then it becomes hard to be like, well, which language, what language do I learn? And like, how do I separate? Like, how do I give time to both, but like be both? And then of course, like, you know, there's going to be some friendly competition with the parents sometimes. Yes. Um, yes. Of course, both, you know, both were, you know, respectful and we had both cultures very present, but you... I'm sure they each made some sacrifices like, okay, I won't go hardcore on teaching her, you know, how to speak my, or, you know, okay. Like we'll let her, like, she'll do something. She'll go to Cambodian New Year and she'll also go to Greek independence, like mm. kind of balancing both. And then sometimes you end up missing some, like I don't speak my, and I, you speak I Greek. Don't. I speak, I speak now, I speak some Greek and it was easier for me to learn Greek than Khmer because I stuck with Greek dancing and I was raised in the Greek church. So I was around um, Greek more. I see. Yeah. And, and also I have living, I have living, I have, not anymore, but I grew up with more extended Greek family. And as many of us know, like a lot of our relatives died in the Khmer Rouge. So I didn't have any like grandparents on my dad's side or people to keep in touch with. Whereas like I could speak to my grandma on the phone in Greek. I see. So, I see. Yeah. So your Khmer is not, oh, not, I want to say non-existent, but uh, 
what I've noticed in my interviews of, of second generation and 1.5 generation Cambodian Americans, uh, despite not being able to communicate in the Khmer language, their comprehension and skills are pretty high. Do you feel comfortable in confirming that you, that if someone spoke to you in Khmer right now, basic you know, a conversation, you would probably understand bits and pieces of it, oh, a good sure, portion I'm, of it. I'm sure I would. And especially if it were like my dad speaking or, or people, people that I know, I don't know why I, cause I've witnessed my dad speaking it a lot. So I would know his way better. Do you have a, uh, like a Cambodian name in the house? I'm just curious. Oh my I don't, I don't, personally, I don't know that. Um, y you were supposed to give me one for, first of all, That's true. but true. my dad, great memory. My dad did give me one, but but we talked about it over New Year. We just talked about it a few months ago, and I asked him, but no, that's not it. <laughs> Molika. Molika means crystal. It's a beautiful name, though. <laughs> yes, but that's not it. Um, yeah. I'm going to spell it wrong. I'm going to type okay. it in the chat. Great suggestion, though, Hellish. Savannah so, Bopa. Damn, that's a mouthful. So Bopa. That's a golden flower for those right. that don't know the Khmer language. Because chrysanthi means golden flower in Greek. Oh, it does? Yes. That's odd. Well, I did not know that either. Yes. Chris so means <laughs> I'm totally pulling a my big fat regretting where they break down like all the words. Chris means golden gold. Um and anthe means flower. And you can oh. probably like anthuriums and like lots of flowers have anthe in them are so there you go some some uh so your your dad would call you that in the house no okay <laughs> honestly no he my dad called me daughter, daughter. <laughs> like just to be honest like still he calls us daughter so. it's a it's a common practice in the Cambodian household to call uh to to have a house nickname where is this just the last sounding the last sound of your first name. Hmm. So I, I was, I was just curious. Like, uh, so my my English, my Cambodian name is Patri, right. and then at the house is 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 the. They drop they drop the subscript, uh, with the the R sound, and it becomes shortened as T H E E T, uh, which not which coincidentally means the youngest boy, in the, in the household. So I am the youngest of five. Right. But because uh, Chrysanthi is not is not a Cambodian name per se. Um, I wouldn't. I was just, I was really curious if they sort of adopted that style of taking the last sound in the first name as your house nickname. No, I was just called daughter. daughter. I was called daughter and my little brother called me a je, which is uh, a je. which is actually oh. big sister in Chinese. Uh -huh. yeah, je. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Have you been to Cambodia? I know your 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 parents have go have gone there every every it feels like every three six months. Have okay. you jumped in with them? This is like this is terrible. Um, You've been to Gr Greece. I've never been to Cambodia or Greece, but oh. my parents go to Cambodia all the time. Even though my mom's not even Cambodian, yes. and my brother lives in Cambodia. I like That's right. That's right. He he keeps you know saying when are you gonna when are you gonna visit, <laughs> and I still haven't gone, and I keep thinking like, oh, I'm going to go next June and then I book a tour and like, it's hard for me to travel for leisure. I travel mm -hmm. all the time, but usually to play somewhere. I see. Honestly, to be the quickest way to get me to Cambodia would be like, oh, you have a gig in Cambodia. Like work would be the thing that gets me there fa faster than anything. Right. I don't right. travel for leisure. You won't travel to see your, your brother there in Cambodia? No, it's not that I wouldn't. It's just that okay. I know myself, and I don't take <laughs> I don't take adequate time off, and I never travel for fun. It's a it's something I'm trying to work on. I don't know. I see, I see. Yeah. I, I I know you know I'm going to Cambodia in two weeks, and and I've been there for so many times, and I know that the the, the music scene has really developed and and has grown um, to be more diverse than it was before. Besides, like sort of K K pop, Thai pop sort of influences now it's much more um diverse uh, i i would honestly think that your style of music uh would be very welcoming because now there's really? more yeah I, I would think so because there's more like french italian it's like, like european restaurants and i think your music without my stereotype um put 
I think it's, it's fitting for that type of setting. You know, yeah. I wouldn't see it like a Cambodian barbecue setting, you know, <laughs> you know, I wouldn't see I it like, uh, <laughs> you know, and that which is very popular and trendy in the country. But, you know, there's a lot of new like English, um, French and Italian restaurant that's popping up in the capital, especially in Siem Reap, a very touristy, a very global city. Um, your music would be very, very welcoming. Yeah. Hey, well, and now they're producing and they're producing more original stuff. So I, I would totally see uh, young artists being open to uh, having your type of sound as part of their music, you know, with the new, so. And if there are any, um, I, I mean, I think, I think every, I don't know if any, there's any listeners that are in Cambodia or, or even not like, um, if you play piano or violin, I actually have like sheet music for the, the, uh, the songs that are on my album. So you could even like download the sheet music and play it on your, play it on your own. Definitely. Definitely. We'll definitely let you drop that uh, information. I should, I should probably put that link in there. Actually. Please, please, please. Now that you found the, the you know, where the, the type of that. <laughs> yeah. And if anyone ever plays something, do send me a video so I can share it with everyone. Definitely. I love when people, someone told me that they were using a, a song for my album, like a dance piece. I was like, please send me a video of that. Where can people find your music right now? Is that the link that you're recommending? That's where you can buy, that's where you can buy the sheet music. Sheet music. Um, though I will say, okay, I'm on this thing called Patreon. Which is, yeah, tell us, um, yeah, tell us what uh, Patreon is all about. I don't reason, know what it is. And the reason I bring up Patreon is because, okay, so, you know, like in the old days when, when you think of like Beethoven and, and stuff like that, um, they would be supported by like by a patron, mm. by some rich person that would bankroll them. <laughs> There's no better way for me to put it that like they would be employed in a court and just would just put out music and would be supported by um, nobles and stuff like that. Patreon is sort of a way of crowdfunding that from just normal people. Okay, who are not rich. <laughs> So the way it works is like people, my patrons basically give me like a dollar a month and that's it. Like you can choose more, but a dollar a month to get access to like all of the things that I, to basically support me creating new work. So, um, you know, doing new music or doing, uh, anything else creative that I do. Cause I also, um, hand stitch like chat books sometimes and, and stuff like that. Uh, and then in return, like they get certain perks, like uh. people that support me at $1 a month. I have like a private stream on there too, where like I talk to them and ask questions. So people who pledge $1 a month mean that like, um, you're on my special Twitter list. That's not the main perk, but I keep all my patrons on the Twitter list so I can creep on them because <laughs> I like to like know who they are and engage with them because they're, they're my biggest supporters. So anyone who's on my Patreon, I, I talk to them a lot um, and they can give suggestions to me and requests that I'll, that I can put into like music or, or my podcast that I have. Um, I like, I had a podcast episode where I performed, where I had like people give me words that they and I did like a musical interpretation of a few different words, like just for a few seconds, but it was really fun. People who pledge $3 a month will get like an MP3 every time I put out a new song. We'll just get wow. that. And like, it's kind of just like, instead of buying the thing, instead of waiting like a year or two years for me to put out a full album with Patreon, it lets me just continually put out stuff here and there. And then as my patron, you just like get everything as it comes all the time. Um, I see. Yeah. And so actually my $5 patrons every month get a monthly private um, live stream with me. And that's actually taking place tomorrow. Um, oh. Where okay. I will take like song requests and like, um, sh like share stuff. Last time I did a cooking, <laughs> I did a cooking demo. We, we like made, we made some brown, <laughs> we ate some brownie cookies together. It was a super sketch. <laughs> it was fun. Um, anyway, so there's more stuff, but anyone who becomes my patron, even at $1 a month gets right off the bat, uh, one free sheet music download of their choice. And there's some of my sheet music that's $20 and you can choose that if you want to, but 
but like it's my way of saying thank you for supporting me in this place that's like my favorite place that is making it possible for me to be an artist every day rather than just like every couple years with an album so that's cool that was a long way of saying that you can buy the sheet music at that link or if you just want one and you are interested in becoming a patron you can do that and get a free sheet music is there any uh commitment time commitment to uh you can cancel any time you can cancel any time yeah. there's no six month minimum or no um okay so i hope everybody heard that um yeah and i won't be offended like you can you can try it for a few months and if you and if you like it that's cool whatever i see <laughs> what are you working on now that for those that are going to be supportive of uh your patron might get access to and you sh can you share us any future stuff I know yeah. there's so much probably, but whatever yeah. you want to feel. I'm working sure. on, um, goodness, I'm working on so many things. I just released on Patreon a, a song called Between Stations, um, okay. which, uh, just to be clear, anyone can stream my music when I put it out. It's not like I'm only releasing music to my patrons, but no one else got MP3s, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Or like when I release more of the backstory, like maybe that will be just... You know, so there are certain or sheet music or whatever. Um, so I'll, I'll put a link to that song on from my SoundCloud actually. Um, and then between that's for piano and strings. Piano and strings, okay. Oh wait, we can listen to stuff together, huh? Yeah, if you give me a link, uh, shoot me a link. Uh, shoot me the link. Do you see a third box on the bottom of the two boxes that me and you are on right now? I see uh, on the left. Let's see. Let me see. If I can copy and paste the link that you just gave me. Let me see what it does. Uh, drops, drop in uh, audio. no audio or uh, at this time. Maybe a YouTube link. I know a YouTube link has worked. So if you have anything on YouTube that has audio of the, any of your pieces, we can, sure, you can we definitely can, share. Sure, we can do audio of a piece, actually. Sure. Um, yeah. From my album release concert. Is, um, it up, is it upload on YouTube? It has to be a YouTube file. Okay. Yeah. So should I put that here? Yeah. Okay. Put it on the same the same message box, and I'll I'll right. see if I can do it. Okay. Right this now. is a video from my album release concert uh, that was over the summer for my stories album. Oops! Uh, something's popping up. It Ooh, is there a it is. live. It's a live video, but this song is also on my album, and the sheet music is available. Can everybody hear this? Do you see this, Chrisanti? Thank <laughs> you.
Thank you. Everybody's clapping on that. Thank you. And thank you to those musicians. Though I'm really grateful to those people. Those three, uh, the two other people playing the strings with me are people that were on tour with me. Some of my some of my best friends, Kiara and Adrian. Shout out to them. Where was this being? Where was the setting and background of this the album event? release? Album release party. It was my album release. This is my album. Cool. It's closer, sh closer. It's shrink wrapped, so it's okay. like it's probably has a glare. Um, yeah, a yeah. bit of a glare. But but yeah, you can order these from my website, and if if you ask for it to be autographed, then I'll take it. Then I always take it out of the shrink wrap, so I don't. <laughs> would it be weird if I just like autographed the shrink wrap and then you could never open the album? Oh, um, I'm sure I'm sure people have done that before. Sure people would be, <laughs> that would be super funny. Um, yeah, they were on the Ariana Grande tour with me and we would have like little tour breaks, like a couple weeks here and there to like before we switched continents. And so that was on the break between Europe and something else. Like I finished my album while we were in Europe, like got it all to the, like while I was on tour, like I'd be like going on stage at night and then like backstage and like on days off, just working on my album, like getting the layout, like sending everything, like... <laughs> Oh my gosh, I was working so I was not sleeping at all. Like backstage, I'd be like scanning things and sending them. Um, and then over that few week break that we had, my musical director, my friend and I, um, Sean Hayward, who's one of my collaborators, we just got together all the music. Like we finished all the sheet music and the charts and organized this whole show <laughs> with equipment and wow. the place. Like it was just huge super rewarding thing and so many people came and it was like an amazing event and to have my tour mates be able to like be able to play on it with me was just so amazing and then two day back two days later we were on a plane for the next leg of tour album release done on on to the next <laughs> thing gosh life moves it sounds, it sounds very intense schedule yeah story of my life <laughs> where can people uh uh Come watch and listen to your music live. Is there any upcoming um, events uh, that we should be aware of? Is it found on there at chrysanthitan.com? Can you give us some? East Coast, please. I would love to come to the East Coast. Um, I don't, as of now, have, I don't have any big concerts on the books right now like that. I'm focusing on more content creation, um, composing more things. Like I, I've, I really want want and need to be composing more at the moment. So I'm focusing on that, which is what I do through Patreon. Like that's kind of what I'm putting my efforts toward now is, um, but you know, if you follow my Instagram, you, you know that I'm like always performing here and there in various smaller things. Like, you know, I have some other stuff coming up. Like, you know, I did like an episode of America's Next top model like a little bit ago or I'll do like a random TV show or a random recital. I just did a recital two days ago. Um, okay. But I'm focusing more on finishing my songs and sharing them with everyone and doing my guess the tunes on Instagram. <laughs> if you I don't see. know what that is. It's like a thing I do every Monday, <laughs> which is like people guess the tunes. Yeah. They get really heated sometimes. Um, so people, uh, it gives me so much anxiety. Someone just said, <laughs> uh, I started doing, I've been doing this for over a year now, like almost a year and a half, I think. And people request a song and then okay. I have the next more, the next Monday I post like a 15 second cover of me playing that song. And okay. with guess the tune, whoever guesses it first gets to pick the tune for next week. So it just kind of, it's ooh, like a ooh, sorry, I cut you. Can we, can we do that right now? Can we do the guess the tune right now? This is very impromptu. Um, well, oh, yeah, okay, but I, but, okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I thought it would be fun for those that are watching that been sort of avid, uh, been following you for the- But seriously, you have special. to check it out on my, I'm not, I swear, I'm I, not even trying to plug my Instagram right now, but it gets okay. hilarious. Like, okay. because people have their notifications on, like on my Instagram. So like whenever I post something, People know yeah. when I post it, which is embarrassing because I delete stuff all the time. But anyway, that's another story. As soon as I post <laughs> the tune, just like the comments, like intensely of people guessing 
sometimes well, it's an obvious song and like everyone is just like oh my gosh i hear some like tragic stories like oh no my internet froze and i missed it and they're already like 10 comments behind uh, or, but maybe we might hopefully we get the same reaction on this on this very live <laughs> impromptu request from kamarican oh my gosh okay wait how am i gonna pick songs okay you know what oh. maybe huh this should be interesting huh. maybe i'll do some old guest the tunes and see if you guys would have been or sorry i don't like you saying that if you all would have been able to um guess them because okay. oftentimes i don't know this the song that someone i usually don't know the song that someone suggests so i i you know i listen to it and i pick it up and, and then do it like i have to say this week's is pretty hard okay here it is ladies and this gents. is not a this isn't a spoiler uh, for those of you who play it. Okay. This is, I'm just gonna do old ones. Um, what should okay. I do? Okay. Can you hear that? Can you hear that? Is that my, is my mic Can you uh, put a thumbs up if you can hear that? Um, sorry, my, this is in the way. Um, okay. That was loud and clear. Sounds nice. I don't, I wouldn't know what that, what that was. Uh. <laughs> I do. Does anybody watching know that? that I'll do last week's. Let me do la what last week stuff. was. Cause it was okay. really easy and heated. Yeah. Exactly, somewhere over the rainbow. Someone got it. Um, Sounds like that person is a regular on your guest of Zoom. No one? Yeah, it's Focus by Ariana Grande. Um, oh, I have a really good one for this audience. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take my headphone uh, out so I can have space to play. I'm gonna go for a little bit now. Uh, it'll be like a minute long. My friends have texted me in private because they don't want to spoil over there. They know what it oh, is. Yeah? I know what it okay. is. Okay. Let's see if anybody else can guess before I re reveal what I think it is. It's a tough crowd. It might be tough. I'm not sure. Be tough. That's what people watching. Any guess also, before like I make it? Or anything. So apologies if I just sounded bad on it. Sakura. No. No, I don't think so. No, 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 no. So that's a beautiful okay. song. If you, if you're, yeah. If you're... So, so Chrisandy, I think that tune that I heard was Camboy's national anthem. Who wants to confirm? Wait. Oh. Oh. All right. Well, well, well. Oh. I missed it. I'm at work. Ooh. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. It's, it's, it's it'll be on replay. The person who who told me um, that they were going to be watching during work. And I was like, yeah, go for it. I'm sure em awesome. employers and if anyone's at school, see, I 4 p.m., I was hoping that no one would be in school at this time, at least. 
for work. Uh, 12 people are watching. There's, there's 8 p.m. over there. Ooh, they're in the, they're in the East Coast zone. Yeah. Anyone else want to take a stab? What do your, what do your I friends guess, say? Same thing. Uh, he said it's very Cambodian. So he didn't he didn't specify what it was, but I know it's had it had remnants of um of the Cambodian national anthem. I hear it so much because you know. Well, uh, you're so you're head. so close. Oh, I read it. Savadak Mai. Uh, Savadak Mai is a national anthem. Oh. That's the formal name of the of the word. Oh, interesting. Of the title. No one yes. ever calls it the national anthem to me. Yes. Yeah. Sabadak, My dad has uh, always, gr growing up, he would always call it by that. He never mentioned yeah. national anthem. Yeah. That Why? song is played like, uh, I, probably, I, I have no, no uh, I, 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 I wouldn't know, but uh, I know that uh, why you would call it Savada and national anthem, but I know that, um, when you look at, um, when you search the Cambodian national anthem on, on Google or anywhere else, you'll see both translation um, oh. being described as Savadak Mai or just the national anthem. Because this is a common track found like. It's everywhere. It's like the most. Uh, everywhere, the yeah. Most like, it is, it played, it's played yes. twice per, per, per day, like in the morning on intercom at school right. and then around before sunset there at the temples. Um, and then on national events and you know, governmental events and activities, you see you see that song being played out. But yeah. Well, good job. <laughs> you should try to stump me, because I you can't stump the host. I know, you especially can't. If it's but you still related. never gave me my name, so. Oh, uh, yeah, put that on the spot. Yeah. Cool. We're at the one hour mark. Uh, usually, um, at this time, we take last minute questions. I'm going to leave this the seat unlocked. For, for a few minutes, anybody wants to come in and have a comment or any questions, uh, uh, please be mindful and respectful uh, if you have uh, of our time. Uh, keep it short if you want to come in and, and say say anything. So that or, means someone can like actually step their video in? Not their video, like they can they can come in as one of the, uh, and have the video feed and ask the questions, yeah. Interesting. But, uh, we, we've done that in, before in, um, in past guests and just another way to get um, our audience engaged with uh, with the with the, with you, uh, the, I guess. Tim but um, like open seat <laughs> right there. It's okay. I, uh, some people are shy. I never would have done that don't. in class. I would have been too scared. <laughs> yeah, no worries. We have full uh, administrative access for uh, for everything. So it I've never. So even... Oh wait, no, that's a lie. I was going to say, this mm -hmm. is so interesting because I've never done um, an interview where someone did not ask me about food since I, but then oh. I realized we, we did have a food one already. That was one of the first questions. So. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, should I ask the, the Khmer food question? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Where can people, uh, uh, while we leave that open, share us where pe can people find, um, just summarize, where can people find your music and where can people uh, sort of follow your progress as, as an artist? Well, I'm on pretty much every on? social media because I'm an introvert, so I don't actually talk to people in real life. Um, so <laughs> I'm just at <laughs> Chrysanthi Tan on everything. Chrysanthi. Twitter, I'm uh, really active on Twitter, Instagram, um, Snapchat, Facebook is just facebook.com slash Chrysanthi Tan. Gosh, I'm everywhere. I'm just like all over the internet. Which is great. The internet's a wonderful place. Just saying. Um, ChrysanthiTan.com is my website. And my Patreon, which is what I talked a lot about during this hour, is patreon.com slash chrysanthitan. That's cool. There you go. You have standardized, you have standardized your screen name because I remember you was I know it went through some no changes. Someone was like able to follow me and my name is kind of hard, so I uh, just made it simple for Sandy Tan. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. cool. Well, do it. Does anybody have any questions that want they want to add uh, before we sort of wrap things up? The seat's open. No, no pressure, but um, it's open. Who's and uh, not taken? <laughs> Who else has that name? What? What name? Someone asked, "How was it not taken on any social media platform?" Because no one else has my name. I mean, I'm sure they do. I'm sure someone does. But that would be very rare. Not in that combination. Yeah, Chrysanthi Tan. 
Yeah, um, I've seen some. And also I got it early enough that now there's some people, okay, I, I, okay. Maybe I understand where the question's coming from because there's some accounts that are like Chrysanthi Tan what? one now or like, Chrysanthi, uh, like, um, but, but they're not the real, they're not the real me. <laughs> I'm yeah. You need to apply for that verification. Like there, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I need to be verified. Troll accounts. I don't think they're troll accounts. I think they're like, I think they're, I want to believe they're well-meaning. But you know, they use, <laughs> my, what? You know, they use my picture and stuff, but it's Chrysanthi Tan like one or Chrysanthi Tan spelled wrong or something. And so, because I took my real name. I took it. I have my real yeah. name. That's okay. great because I, it's, it can, well, luckily, both of us have like not common names, so I would think social media like it's not going to be. We're not we're not going to have any issues, you know, finding and securing it. Yeah. Um, also, I have to say that I really used to hate my name, but I love it now. <laughs> Just thought I'd put it out there. <laughs> and I've seen you spell with a X of in oh, yeah, a few yeah, yeah. of the postcards you sent um, out to me. My Some of your music my have name is Xanthi. I'll type it. Xanthi. Xanthi with a with an X. Hey, to the person who said they hate their name, um, one, if you hate your name, you can always change it. That's viable. Um, or maybe explore why, why you hate it. For me, I hated my name for reasons that I came to peace with. So, you know, anyway, like cultural reasons. I didn't want to be too weird or this or that, but now I'm like embracing it. Um, Xanthi is my nickname sort of an X, but it's not just mm. like, you know, how like Christmas or Christina is sometimes spelled with an X. So it's like just an abbreviation for Chris, but also it has the double meaning of X is in, in Greek. It's the letter as we pronounce it, Chi. In, in Chi. Greek, you pronounce it Chi. Mm. C-H-I. That's what that letter is. And that's the first letter of my Greek, of my name in Greek is that. My Greek name is Hisanti. Cool. Putting it. Mm, Hisanti. There's no X in the Kamila alphabet system. We had to use weird characters to get that sound, like X ray. But uh, oh. yeah. Okay. Well. That's FYI. Because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know the Greek. Um, I didn't know that the X had some Greek yeah. uh, connection. So it's like it's double. It's not just like me trying to be trendy with an X. Like X is the first. That's the first letter of my Greek. Of my Greek name, of my name in Greek. I see. Yeah. Well, Chrysanthi, I think uh, I think our time is up. This is I, I we're very blessed to have you over an hour. I didn't anticipate forty over forty forty five minutes. So uh, so thank you, uh, you know, for taking uh, time out of your busy schedule, your workout schedule as well. <laughs> we took a little bit of your time for that. Um, to sit with us and share your story with, with our readers. Um, do you have any last uh, comments or anything you want to say before we sort of wrap things up? I, maybe I can, maybe I'll offer like a, a special to, to everyone listening. Should I do that? Do oh it. Oh my gosh. I'm, I, want, Cambodian, I, I don't think people Cambodian New Year is coming up. <laughs> yep, Cambodian New Year's oh for gosh. those that are aware. We're, it's less than three weeks away on April 12th. April 12th to April 15th yeah. is the Cambodian New okay. Year. So this is, a, is this a kind New Year treat for all our listeners. Okay. So if you're right? if and only people who I guess listened will know if you, um, if you want to get anything from my like sheet music or anything from my store, I'll, I'll give like $5 off and for anyone who puts in like, let's see. New, code new name, year. code promo new code. New year. Pro until New Year's and a promo it'll code. last until the end of Cambodia New Year. I need to put, make a note of that. <laughs> yeah, April fifteenth, then Chrysanthi is yes, the last yes, yes. day. So sixteenth, I guess. It, yeah. Okay. We'll say the sixteenth just to be just to be sure. Yes. Sweet. New Year. Great. No spaces. And you can put that toward sheet music or anything, as long as it's not something that costs five dollars. Like we'll say ten. If it costs ten dollars, <laughs> so I have a postcard set that's for sale for five dollars. So let's not do that. Okay. But, <laughs> Paper shipping. Paper shipping. Yeah. Anyway. Minimum of ten. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
I'm good. Thanks for good? talking to me. Thank you, Chrysanthi. Thank you, uh, everybody that's watched us earlier. Uh, if you miss anything, the broadcast will be available for replay immediately uh, at the conclusion of this conversation. Yeah. So let's do a collective wave and bye. I'll hit stop on the record um, and we can leave it on. Where's the cat? We didn't get the cat.